Hi everyone, I'm Lev Loy Chung from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering. Welcome to the course Seismic Evaluation and Retrofit of Structures. Over at the Department of Construction Engineering, National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. Today the topic is Reinforced Concrete Jacketing. After evaluation, if a structure is found to be not sufficient in terms of seismic performance, and we have to do something to upgrade the seismic performance of a structure. And reinforced concrete jacketing is a very common method in Taiwan. By reinforced concrete jacketing is to make the column cross-section larger that means that we put reinforced concrete jacket on the column in order to enhance the seismic capacity of those columns. And with the application of reinforced concrete jacketing, the column becomes stronger. And we will shift the failure mode of the original structure to a better failure mode in order to avoid weak or soft stories. And here are some terminology. Seismic retrofit. Seismic retrofit is a method to upgrade the seismic performance of its structures. Retrofit with reinforced concrete jacketing, column enlargement. This is a method to upgrade the seismic performance of those columns. That's to, that is to put seismic to put reinforced concrete on the columns and after retrofit we have to conduct detailed evaluation to make sure that the degree of the upgrading seismic performance upgrading is sufficient and here's a picture of a uh, Ho Jara Junior High School located at Tainan City And uh, in order to conduct a, an experiment in the laboratory, we cannot duplicate the whole structure in the laboratory. Instead, we just take one classroom unit, one classroom unit here, and then originally the structure is a three-story building because the seismic performance is dominant by the first floor so that the lumber story is reduced to two story when we fabricate and uh, fabricate a specimen in the laboratory and then the originally is a 3d structure and uh, in the laboratory we reduce it to a 2d structure and uh, it becomes a planar frame and here's the aeration the second story and the roof of the structure and here's the side view of the structure, of the specimen. Therefore, it becomes a planar frame. And here's an experimental setup. This is the frame in a white color. And uh, we have uh, doors and windows. And then we have two actuators exerting force on the, fr on the second floor and on the roof. And uh, the 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 amount of uh, of force is in proportion. The force the forces applied on the second floor and the roof are in proportion to one to two, one to two. And then we have uh, some uh, steel frame to prevent the structure from out of plan deformation or out of plan failure. And after the test, we can have the have the uh, hysteresis, hysteresis root of the structure performance. And the or horizontal axis is the first floor displacement, interstory displacement, and the vertical axis is the base shear of the structures. And uh, from the observation, 
take a look to the to the failure mode of the specimen. And because of the presence of the captive of the window shield, therefore the column is captive. That means that the the effective height of the column is reduced. So that we is uh, observed that column failure and shear failure. And the base shear strength is a 48.2 ton force. That means that the maximum base shear is 48.2 ton force. And uh, after the experiment, we, we are going to apply virtual bit masses to upgrade, to recover the strength of the, of the structures. And here we use a uh, rainfall concrete jacketing, and uh, here's the elevation. And then you can observe that there are some uh, lateral or transverse reinforcement here. And here's the cross section at the column of the column's cross section. This is the original column. And then we apply some uh, longitudinal reinforcement and transverse reinforcement. There are totally 12 rebars, 12 rebars in the longitudinal direction. And uh, at the beam column joint, we cannot have, uh, we cannot apply the reinforcement across the beam. Instead, we just use a uh, use a transverse reinforcement applied in the, at the corners. There are totally four corners here. And here's the picture of the reinforcement, the setup of those reinforcement, and the longitudinal reinforcement, and the lateral reinforcement. Uh, you can be observed that the longitudinal, longitudinal reinforcement penetrate through the slab. Okay, after after retrofit, uh, we conduct we conducted the pushover the uh, the, uh, the test again, and uh, the base shear is increased from forty eight point two ton force to eighty eight point twenty three ton force, and uh, by observing the failure mode of the structures, and uh, you observe that the beam end fractional failure here, the beam end fractional failure, and the column, and the column end, the bottom of the reinforced concrete jacket column, there's a plastic hinge here, fractional fra failure here. And for the original column, that's the, the beam column joint without retrofit, some damage is observed. And, uh, and then we have a larger lateral strength and then we have a better deformation capacity and the failure mode changes from the first floor failure and the damage is distributed to the second floor and the roof. That means that after reinforced concrete jacketing, the failure mode becomes better. Okay, here are some uh, characteristics of reinforced concrete jacketing. And then a retrofit with reinforced concrete jacketing, we make the columns cross section larger with a larger cross section, the actual bearing capacity increase and uh, with a more longitudinal reinforcement and the moment strength increase. And then we have applied more transverse reinforcement so that the shear strength is also increased. Because uh, the, the spacing of the jacket, the spacing of the transverse reinforcement of the jacket becomes, uh, becomes less. That means that they are more closely spaced and the uh, transverse reinforcement 135 degree hook is also applied so that after reinforced concrete jacket, jacketing the ductility is better. You can be observed from the experimental results. This is the original column. The deformation capacity is not that good. After retrofit, the deformation capacity becomes uh, better. And then uh, with uh, reinforced concrete jacketing, 
both the strength and the ductility of the structures is increased. And uh, because the column moment strength increase, the structure may change from weak column strong beam to strong column big beam. So that the soft and weak first story may be elimina eliminated so that we can achieve a better failure mode. And uh, with uh, reinforced crank rejecting, the column strength and ductility increase in both directions. That means that by making the, the column cross section larger, we can enhance the seismic capacity in X direction and Y direction, two horizontal directions simultaneously. And if the column, if the material quality of the original column is no good, and then we can apply reinforced concrete jacketing. With a reinforced concrete jacketing, post installation of reinforcement is not necessary. That means that in case the post installation of the reinforcement is not applicable, we may use reinforced concrete jacketing. And compared with uh, adding wind wall or adding shear wall, reinforced concrete jacketing has less impact to lighting, to openings, and ventilation. That means that we, the influence to the opening of the original structure is less, so that the impact on lighting and ventilation becomes less. But reinforced concrete jacketing occupies space, so then it may impact the, the visual you may induce a visual impact. And also, with the introduction of reinforced concrete jacketing, you may make the corridor, the width of the corridor less, so that you may have uh, some, uh, some uh, problem for the passage. And here's the reinforcement of the reinforced concrete jacketing, and here's the longitudinal rebars. And uh, we assign, we put some longitudinal reinforcement at four corners of the jackets, so that the reinforcement, the longitudinal rebars, penetrate through the slab, but not penetrate the roof in order to avoid water leakage, so that the reinforced concrete jacket stop at the bottom of the roof, at the bottom of the roof it's not necessary to penetrate through the roofs in order to avoid water leakage. And we may use a lap splice or a coupler. Here's a coupler or here's a lap splice in order to to have a to for the longitudinal reinforcement. And uh, usually Spice is not allowed at the same elevation. That means that there's a coupling here, another coupling here. And there are two types of uh, reinforcement, the assignment of the, the arrangement of the reinforcement. And this is uh, alternative one, this is alternative two. From alternative one, we use a two L shape, one L here, Another L here, start from here, and ends here for the lateral or transverse reinforcement. And we use a corner, corner ties here. There's one alternative. Another alternative, same as before, one L here, another L here. Instead of corner ties, we use interior ties here with one end 90 degree hook, the other end 135 degree hook. And they are placed alternatively in alternate mode. That means that we have 135 degree hook here, 90 degree hook here. 
135 degree hook here and 90, 90 degree hook here. There's an alternative one between the longitudinal rebars, replace the rebar from the slab top to the bin uh, to the bin bottom. Okay, the the spacing of these two longitudinal rebar is too large. In order to avoid cracking, we put additional longitudinal rebar here. But this longitudinal rebar start from the top of the current slab to the bin bottom of the slab above. And we place two L shape. L shape longitudinal uh, transverse V bar here. There's one L. And there's the other L here. And the ends, both ends of the L shape transverse reinforcement with 135 degree hole. For alternative one, we have uh, corner ties here, and uh, the corner ties we have 90 degree hook at both ends of the corner ties. Another alternative, alternative two here, we have interior tie. One end is 90 degree hook, the other end is uh, 135 degree hook. They are placed in alternative mode. That means that 135 degree hook here, 90 degree, 90 degree hook here and place alternatively. And here are some uh, reference drawing for the engineer. Or then alternative one, at the beam column joint, we have uh, we use a corner corner tie here. And for the alternative two, we use for the at the beam column joint, we still use a corner tie. But at the column cross section for alternative one, we use a corner tie. For alternative two, we use an interior tie with a 135 degree hook at one end, and at the other end, it is a 90 degree hook. And here's the construction procedures for reinforced concrete jacketing. Step one, remove the piping and facility away from the construction area. And step two, and we make opening of the first floor slab around the column and excavate to the footing. And step three, we move, we move the finishing of the original column and then chip the column surface with roughness of six millimeters. And uh, the next step, and uh, we only remove those have to, not to damage any reinforcement of the slab opening. And then we have to remove the dust and loose, loose scrap with high pressure air. That means that we have to apply high pressure air in order to remove the dust and also those are loose scraps. Step six, you have uh, some crack with uh, some press is found and then the, the, the width of the craft is larger than 3 mm. And then we have to apply epoxy in order to recover those cracks. Step 7, and then we have to install. We, are, we arrange those are longitudinal rebar and those are transverse rebars. And then step 8, in, install the form wall and then pour concrete from the slab opening. And then repeat, repeat the process step by step. And then the maximum aggregate should not be larger than 30, 13 millimeter. And then keep the original surface, the surface of, of the original column wet. And then vibrate the concrete from the outer surface of the formwork during the placement of the concrete. And then repeat the process one floor by one floor. To the to the top floor, but not penetrating, but not penetrating through the roof. 
in order to avoid any water leakage. And then we have to determine the plastic hinge or La Nina hinge parameters. If uh, under fracture shear failure for the original column, we use uh, four points to describe the force displacement relationship of the column under fractional shear failure. Point one is the origin, zero, zero. Point B, delta Y and Vm, and Vm equal to 2mm divided by Hc. Mm is the moment strength times 2, and then divided by Hc. Hc is the clear height of the column. And point B, delta Fs, and then Vm, delta Fs is the displacement at which the failure mode transform from fractional failure to shear failure. And then the last point is the point at which the bearing capacity is lost. For point P, x axis, delta equal to delta y, and delta y equal to Vm divided by Koc. Koc is the fractional stiffness of the original column, equal to 12 Eioc divided by Hc cubed. And Eioc is reduced due to cracking, equal to 0.35 Eoc times Igoc. And Eoc, here's the empirical formula to calculate Eoc. Eoc is the elastic modulus of the original column, equal to 15,000 squared times square root of Fc prime. And Ig is the second moment of the column cross, uh, cross sectional area equal to bh cubed divided by 12. B, if the, here is the, if the seismic direction it is shown here, and here is the best, the, the width of the column, and here is the depth of the column. And in this, in this case, for the original column, the width is, is a 50 uh, centimeter, and the depth is uh, 30 centimeters. And V equal to Vm, the strength equal to Vm equal to 2mn OC. OC is the original column, the moment strength of the origin column, divided by the clear height of the column. And point P, after reinforced concrete jacketing, point P, delta equal to delta Y equal to Vm divided by Kc, and Vm is the lateral strength due to fractional failure, equals to 2 times MnOc is the moment strength of the original column, MnJc is the moment strength of the concrete jacket, reinforced concrete jacket, and then divided by Hc, Hc is the clear height of the column. And Kc here, is the fractional stiffness of the column, and we use a super superposition. Kc equal to 12 Eioc, that's the original column, divided by Hc cubed, plus 12 Eijc divided by Hc cubed. And Eijc is the fractional rigidity of the jacket with the consideration of cracking and it is reduced to 0.35 EJC. EJC is the elastic modulus of the jacket, equal to 15,000 times square root of FJC prime, because the complex strength of the concrete may not be the same or may not be the same of the original column. In general, the complex strength of the jacket is in general higher than the original column. And IGJC is the second moment of the jacket equal to BJ times XJ cubit divided by 12 minus BH cubit divided by 12. That means that the second moment of the 
of the enlarged column minus minus the second moment of the cross-sectional cross area of the original column. And then we move to point C for the original column, delta equal to delta Fs, and V equal to Vm, and Vm equal to 2mm divided by Hc, and here's the empirical formula to calculate delta Fs, equal to 3 divided by 100 times 4 rho double prime, Rho double prime is the volume ratio of the transverse reinforcement equal to AV divided by BS. AV is the cross-sectional area of the shear rebath, and B is the width of the column, as is the spacing of those are transverse reinforcement. And B here is the column width, and uh, VM here, the, the third term, the third term Vm is the stress, shear stress equal to Vm divided by Bd, and Vm is the shear strength due to fractal failure. And B is the width of the column, and D is the effective depth of the column. It's assumed to be 80% of the depth of the column, and X here is the column depth. And after reinforced concrete jacketing, and uh, point C becomes for the horizontal axis delta equal to delta Fs, and V equal to Vm, Vm equal to 2mn original column plus 2m of the jacket divided by Hc. And here's the empirical, empirical formula to calculate delta Fs. Delta Fs divided by Hc equal to 3 divided by 100, very similar to the original column, plus 4 row double prime. And row double prime is changed from the original one, Av divided by Bs, with the addition of Avj divided by Bjsj. And Bj is the width of the jacket. And Sj is the spacing of the shear V bar of the jacket. And then move to the next term, Vm, Vm equal to 2mmoc divided by BdHc divided by 133 square root of the Fc prime, Foc prime of the compressed strength of the original column plus 2mn jacket that's the moment strength of the jacket, divided by Bj, the width of the jacket, Dj, the effective, jack, effective depth of the jacket, Hc is the tree height of the column, divided by 133, square root of compressed strength of the jacket. And D is the effective depth of the original column. It's assumed to be 80% of the depth of the column, and the actually is the original column depth. And DJ is the effective depth of the RC jacketing, equal to 80% of HJ. And HJ is the depth of the RC jacketing. And then the last term here, NU divided by 40 AG FC prime, after reinforced concrete jacketing, is changed to NU divided by 40. BH FOC prime, that's the complex strength of the original column, plus BJHJ minus BH times FJC prime. FJC prime is the complex strength of the RC jacket. And then we move to the last point for the original column. Delta equal to delta A, and uh, with the lower bound delta Fs, that means that delta A cannot be less than delta Fs, and V equal to zero, that means that at point D, the strength of the column disappears. And here's the empirical formula to calculate delta A. Delta A divided by Hc equal to four divided by 100, one plus, one plus tangent squares, Theta divided by tangent theta plus nus 
divided by A V F Y T D C tangent theta. And tangent theta takes the last value of 65 degree and arc tangent H C divided by H. And D C here is the column concrete is the is the core concrete depth. After retrofit with RC jacketing, delta equal to delta A and the lower bound value. The lower bound for delta A is delta FS. And V equal to zero, the strength disappears. And here's an empirical formula to calculate delta A. Delta A divided by HC equal to four divided by 100 plus times one plus tangent square theta Theta equal to the minimum of 65 degree and arc tangent, HC divided by H. And DC here is the column concrete, core concrete depth. And DJC is the RC jacketing, the core concrete depth of RC jacketing. That means that after reinforced concrete jacketing, Another term is added here. Okay, finally, we complete all the points, point A, B, C, D, for the original column, 0, 0, delta Y, Vm, delta Fs, Vm, and delta A with lower bound delta Fs, 0. And then to make the value non-dimensional, so that we have a theta here. Delta is normalized with HC, and V is changed to moment, and then normalized by MN. So that we have 0, 0 here, and uh, after normalization, here becomes uh, the coordinate of point B equal to 0, 1, Because the hinge parameter only takes care of the plastic deformation. Therefore, the displacement here, the elastic displacement is subtracted sub tra sub from the total displacement. Therefore, we have delta F, delta Y minus delta Y equal to zero. It becomes zero here. And Vm is normalized. After normalization, it becomes 1 here. And delta Fs, elastic moment, elastic displacement is subtracted. Therefore, we have delta Fs minus delta Y. And then normalized by HC. And Vm is normalized by Mn. Vm is changed to moment. And then normalized by Mn. And then it becomes 1 here. And at this point, there's no elastic displacement. So the point B, you go to maximum of delta Fs, delta A, and then normalize by HC. And there's no strength here. Therefore, the point here, point D becomes a B0. And then after normalization, the moment strength is Mn, and the rotational Excuse me, the moment scale factor is Mn, and the rotation scale factor equal to 1. Okay, after some uh, manipulation, finally we come up with the hinge parameters, point A, B, C, D. Point A, 0, 0, point B, 0, 1, and point C, A, 1, and then point D, B0, and A equal to delta Fs minus delta Y divided by HC, and B equal to maximum of delta Fs, delta A, and then normalize by HC. And the moment scale factors equal to Mn, the moment strength of the original column, and the rotation scale factor equal to 1. And uh, this hinge parameters is applicable for the original column and the column with a reinforced concrete jacket. And then we move to shear 
nonlinear hinge. And the shear strength after reinforced concrete jacketing, Vn equal to Vc. Vc is the shear strength contributed by concrete of the original column. Plus Vjc, and this part is contributed by the jacket. Plus Vs, plus Vjs. Vs is the shear strength of the contributed by the steel of the original column. And Vjs is the corresponding strength contributed by the jacket. And we see shear strength, shear strength of the shear strength contributed by concrete of the original column equal to 0 0.35 times 1 plus NU divided by 1, 140 AG times FC prime times BD. NU is the design actual force, is the actual force under that load and half of the life load. And AG is the gross cross-sectional area of the original column. FC prime is the compress strength of the original column. B is the width of the column, original column. D is the effective depth of the original column. And VJS, VJC is the shear strength contributed by the content of the jacket. You go to 0 0.35 times square root of FJC prime. FJC prime is the complex strength of the concrete of the jacket. Times BJ, BJ is the width of the jacket. Times DJ, DJ is the effective depth, effective depth of the jacket. Minus BH. This term here represents the cross-sectional area of the jacket. And VS is the shear strength contributed by the steel of the original column. Equal to AB, FYT, D, divided by S. And uh, this formula is adopted from the concrete structure design code, equation 4-15. AC is the cross-sectional area of the transverse, transverse reinforcement. FYT is the yielding strength and S is the spacing of the transverse reinforcement. And VJS, the corresponding strength contributed by the jacket, equal to AJV. AJV is the cross-sectional area of the transverse reinforcement of the jacket. In this case, and uh, this is the summation, there are two legs here, two legs here. Therefore, AJV is the cross-sectional area of this leg plus the cross-sectional area of this leg. And then FJYT is the yielding strength of the transverse reinforcement, and DJ is the effective depth of the jacket. And SJ is the spacing of the transverse reinforcement of the jacket. And then we use our three points to describe the force displacement relationship under shear failure. Point A, 0, 0. Point B, delta S, V, N. And point B, delta A, 0. But we have the lower bound for delta A is delta F, S, delta S. And the upper, uh, upper bound for delta A equal to 0.04 HC. Okay, for the original column, for point B, Delta equal to delta S equal to Vn divided by Kc. Vn is the shear strength of the original column. Kc is the stiffness of the original column. Equal to 12 Eic divided by Hc cubed. And V equal to Vn is the shear strength of the original column. It consists of two parts. One is Vc by the concrete. The other is Vs by the origin by the transverse reinforcement. And uh, point C equal to delta A with lower bound delta S and upper upper bound point O four HC and V equal to zero. And here's the empirical formula for delta A. Delta A divided by HC equal to four divided by one hundred 
times 1 plus tangent square theta divided by tangent theta plus nu s divided by h a v f y t d c tangent theta. After reinforced concrete jacket jacketing, the force displacement relationship is uh, described as follows. Point B delta equal to delta S equal to Vn divided by Kc and Vn is the shear strength with RC jacketing equal to Vc plus Vjc by the concrete plus Vs original column plus Vjs the shear strength of the transverse reinforcement of the jacket and Kc is the stiffness after reinforced concrete jacketing we use a superposition superposition to calculate Kc equal to 12 EIOC divided by HC cubit that's the stiffness of the original column plus 12 EIJC divided by HC cubit that's the stiffness of the jacket and point C we have delta A with lower bound delta Fs upper bound 0.04 HC and V equal to zero, the strength disappears. And here's the empirical formula for delta A divided by HC. One more term here, and this is the term contributed by the original column. And this is the term contributed by the jacket. Equal to SJ, SJ is the spacing of the spacing of the jacket spacing of the transverse reinforcement of the jacket. AVJ is the cross-sectional area of the transverse reinforcement and FYTJ is the yielding strength and DJC is the depth of the core concrete of the jacket. And here is the force displacement relationship and then we normalize it to make it non-dimensional, non to make the, all the quantity non-dimensional. After normalization, delta is normalized by HC, the clear height of the column, and the lateral force or shear force is normalized by the shear strength. In addition, the elastic, the elastic uh, displacement is eliminated so that for the ori for the point A is the origin zero zero and point B zero one because the elastic displacement is subtracted from the total displacement, therefore delta S becomes zero. Becomes zero. That, that means that there's no no plastic displacement at this point. And V N is normalized to one and then point See here, the displacement is normalized by HC. Therefore, we have D, the value D here, equal to the displacement normalized by HC. And the force scale factor equal to the shear strength of the column with reinforced concrete jacket equal to VC plus VJC plus VS plus VJS. And the displacement scale factor equal to HC, the clear height of the column. Okay, here's the nonlinear hinge parameter of the column with reinforced concrete jacket under shear failure. Point A, 0, 0. Point B, 0, 1. And point C, D0 and D equal to something divided by HC and the force scale factor equal to the shear strength of the column with reinforced concrete jacket and the displacement scale factor equal to the clear height of the column and here are some reference and some videos available Okay, in, uh, in this lecture, we talk about a, the retrofit method 
with a reinforced concrete jacket that's to make the column sections the column cross section larger and uh, after retrofit we have to conduct detailed evaluation therefore we need the moment nonlinear hinge of the enlarged column and also the shear nonlinear hinge of the enlarged column and in this lecture we describe how to how to construct the nonlinear hinge, moment nonlinear hinge, and how to assign the shear nonlinear hinge, how to how to come up with the hinge parameters for the moment nonlinear hinge and the shear nonlinear hinge. And the video here will be um, will be uploaded in this channel. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.